Coming up next on the program, Singapore is taking the lead in the region's green finance initiatives with its comply or explain ESG reporting rule. But our next guest says businesses have to tread carefully to avoid greenwashing. Benjamin So of the ESG fintech company Stax will join us in just a couple of minutes to talk about that. In Asia's journey towards green transition, Singapore's Keppel Corporation has now inked two new deals to boost its production of green hydrogen and ammonia for use in Australia and export to Asia. The company will join Central Queensland's Hydrogen Project Consortium along with Japan's firms like Iwatani, Marubeni and Kansai Electric Power. Keppel's also signed a memorandum of understanding to get access to green hydrogen supply from the Queensland project. Meanwhile, as Singapore companies ramp up their efforts to go green, the SGX is proposing new guidelines that require local businesses to post mandatory climate disclosures on their sustainability reports. This transition might prove a bit tricky for some Singaporean businesses. This according to Stax, which operates the ESGpedia, which powers the MAS Green Print ESG registry. Benjamin So is the founder and managing director of Stax which operates the Monetary Authority of Singapore's Green Print ESG Registry. He's with me now. Benjamin, thanks for being with us. Thanks. Good so pleasure. give us an update on the, the new guidelines that the SGX is coming up with. I mean, there, there's been an ongoing process here. It's none, none of it is out of the blue. But just t tell us where we are and what these new ones are. You're right, Timo. So, you know, nothing is new because you know, since 2016, SGX has already released mandatory requirements for listed companies in sustainability reporting. But you know, just last year, they have also started to uh, release this uh, comply or explain regulations and starting in certain sectors in the listed space. And I think what's great is that they also released a portal, a fintech portal, to be able to allow companies to easily now disclose according to their requirements. Is this only for fintech companies? No, it's actually for several different sectors that are highlighted as impactful ones in Singapore. All right, so what is uh, this comply or report? Sorry, comply or? Comply or explain. Explain. Yeah. What, well, what do they need to explain if they don't comply? And so, what, are the, what, are the, what are the penalties if they don't? Well, right now it's already a guideline, okay, whereby the implementation will be upcoming over the next few months. And we are expecting to see that not just in Singapore, but in the region. You know, you look at ASEAN, various stock exchanges, all various countries have also come up with regulations to compel companies. And we start with the listed ones because they are the most impactful at the end of the value chain, okay, to be able to impact the entire supply chain upstream. This, the Singapore approach to this has been fairly um groundbreaking if you like. I mean they're leading in terms of uh, both devising methodologies for going into a green transition and also for uh, implementing them too. But is it, is it enough? I mean is anybody following them? Because the, the, the Asian picture generally is not necessarily particularly on board with the way Singapore looks at this stuff. Well, actually, I do see the encouraging news that you know there are several countries in Asia already picking up the pace. You know, Asia is a supply chain to the world, and you know there are already increasing regulatory requirements from EU to compel suppliers from Asia to be able to have these disclosures in place. So I think as the way going forward, we have to have that export competitiveness, which is why we are starting to see several countries in Asia also implementing such regulations at different uh, degrees of requirement today. Make the case for Singapore companies and Asia companies yep. to actually get in on board with this initiative and this whole way of thinking. Well, with increasing investor pressure, with increasing regulations and conscious buyers, I think there's really no other way out in the near future. You know, ultimately, sustainable companies are profitable and to be profitable, you have to be sustainable. If you want to be able to attract funding, if you are able to raise capital at lower cost, and if you want to be able to maintain your brand value or market value in the new world of sustainability, that's only one way to go. And what are the steps that they have to take in order to begin to comply and begin to go down this path you're describing? So I think it's great news that right now there are several initiatives led by both public or private sector. You know, the private sector is now dangling incentives through the low use of green finance by the financial sector. The public sector has come up with initiatives like the MES Project Green Print, and that fosters the spirit of collaboration in the industry where fintech companies like us would be able to provide digital tools to enable corporates to get started on an easier way. 
we suggested at the beginning that uh, you at Stacks think that the, the process might be tricky, uh, the transition. So what, what do you think is tricky about it and how do we get over that? Yeah, the tricky part of this is that, you know, not everything is so binary. It's not just about green or brown because there's 50 shades of green in between. So, you know, that we are hearing from the financial sector that it is important to therefore have primary asset level data, particularly along the supply chain with big and small caps in Singapore. That usually is the part, in Asia, sorry, that usually is the part whereby, you know, there's a missing gap. You know, where the Asia-based companies do not have enough data to satisfy the full value chain reporting that is required by foreign buyers today. There is a degree of criticism, despite Singapore's thought leadership in this space, uh, of, of application. I mean, Singapore has a huge fossil fuels exposure, uh, and that doesn't really come under this. Is there, is there uh, an element here of talk and no action in Singapore? Not necessarily. I mean, we have a green plan and we have a transition plan. Okay, so even the financial sector has really come up with a transition finance where the entire portfolio is expected to be net zero by a certain target based on science. So I think we are really on a good track right now and that's where you know, the technology and data uh, transparency would serve very well to serve that needs. All right. Benjamin, we'll leave it there. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Thank you. Nice talking Pleasure. to you. Benjamin So is with Stacks here in Singapore. Uh,